Hello, my name is Hutch Olsberg. I'm owner and CEO of Key West Boats. Key West Boats are the best built, safest, best value of boating today. In the next few minutes, you're going to see how my experience with my family, friends, and boating goes into every Key West boat we build today. Key West Boats are leaders and innovators of the boating industry. We have a full line of boats, one of which will fit the needs of you and your family. Now this is the beginning of Key West Boats. This is where our design starts. This is the plug, and this is what we use to, to make the form for the molds to build all the Key West Boats. We start from wood, uh, bondo, fiberglass, whatever it takes to make the original shape that we can reproduce the product for. And uh, the quality starts in the design that we start with. The uh, fit, finish, all begins with the tool. So this is the plug, and it's made from wood, and we uh, sand it, shape it, to get the exact form that we need. And from this, we can reproduce it with a mold, make a mold, wax that mold, and re reproduce other boats off of it. And what we have over here is this is the hull. And we've already made the, the wooden plug, made the plug, and from that, we've uh, waxed that plug, made the mold, and out of this, we pulled out and made the bottom for the uh, deck and then built the deck on the top side. So we'll take this, this hull mold, finish it, wax it, buff it, bring it to a high gloss, because whatever is on this mold will transfer off to the boat. So we want to make sure we have a real high gloss finish with, with, with no blemishes in it so that it'll transfer off and make a perfect boat. This is the beginning of a Key West boat. This is the form, or the mold, if you will, that the boat will be made inside of. And it's going through its waxing process where, where we'll buff, clean, and put a release agent on it so that when we put the gel coat and build the boat, it'll come out of here. The boat will go inside, starting paint first, then the fiberglass, and then it'll be pulled out. And any imperfections that's in this part will be inside the, the bold, so inside the boat. So we want to make sure that this is as, as clean and as waxed up and as, as a good finish as possible. We're here at the first step of manufacturing a Key West boat. We've had our mold and the mold's waxed, and here he's applying the gel coat. He's going to apply a little extra gel coat in the areas that are hard to spray on. We want to make sure that the gel coat is the exact thickness throughout the whole boat, so some areas he'll need to apply with a brush that uh, are difficult to spray to. The gel coat is the finish on the boat. This is what you get to see. This is the waterproofing on the outside of the fiberglass. And he's putting this gel coat on, and he's got to apply it at the exact right millage to make sure that we'll get the, the proper weathering of the boat. If you're, you're too thin, you'll get alligation. The gel coat will wear out. You won't have the, the waterproofing. If you get it too thick, you'll have stress cracking and uh, problems with weathering later too. So you got this is the most important step to make sure that the gel coat is put on at the right thickness. This is inside out and backwards. You have to think inside out and backwards. He's putting the paint on first, and then we're going to put the fiberglass on, to, on the paint, on the gel coat. What we were just doing, you see Willie did, is uh, he used this mill gauge, and this uh, checks the millage of the gel coat while it's wet. He depresses this into the gel coat, and uh, these uh, ridges are at different heights, and as uh, the ridge, as the one it touches, that's the amount of thickness that we have in there. So he'll do that on the first coat, make sure he's exactly where he wants to be, come back and put a second coat and check that again to make sure that he's the exact millage that he needs to be. And then when he's finished, we'll go through another QC process to, to make sure that he's all done his job right and that the boat is perfect before we go to the next step. The next step we're doing here is Kim, she's looking for any imperfections in the gel coat. In all the areas where we did our mill check, she's gonna repair all those areas. She's gonna look for any areas that might be thin and she's gonna go back and back gel those areas so that we get the proper thickness of gel coat. It's real critical that this step be perfect. Here's another step that most boat companies don't do. We, we take the extra step to, to, to soften these radiuses with a fillet putty. This allows that glass to roll over these areas and ensure that you won't have an air bubble and, and a blemish later. This gel coat, this is a side that you don't see. The side against the mold is the surface that you see, but it's only eggshell thick. We want to make sure that the glass gets tight up against this area. We soften these radiuses that are tight. It's a glass that's kind of hard to stay into. It's another step to ensure that 10 years from down the road, you won't have little blemishes coming back later. We've uh, gel coated and put our filler in, and we're getting ready to do the skin coat on the boat. And this, when he puts this glass on, this putty that we put in, that'll soften that radius. Make sure that glass gets able to roll down and gets a real tight finish so we won't have an air bubble later, have that eggshell finish get cracked. And it's important this skin coat be done 
as soon as the gel coat dries, as soon as that gel coat area is dry enough so that you can touch it with your hand, we come on back with this skin coat to make sure that we get a really good chemical bond as well as a mechanical bond. You know, that ensures that we don't have blisters later on. And we'll roll this down tight with these bubble rollers and make sure that the resin and glass and hardener is down tight to that gel coat finish. Remember, the gel coat was the first layer we put on, and it's only eggshell thickness. So this glass has to reinforce it up tight against her. That eggshell finish will crack. Well, here's the, the, the skin coat process on the hull. The hull's done inside out, got the mold with the gel coat on it. It's been checked for any imperfections, and now we're putting our first layer of glass on it. Now, this is a replacement of what uh, used to be done a hand laying. Just uh, the mats put on with this gun. The resin, glass, hardener all coming out at the same time. When you're putting a chop in there, you don't have to break down the binders of a hand laid. This is the same material that uh, is done as hand laying, but you just have to make sure you have an operator that can put it on evenly. By putting a chop on, you don't have the binders to break down that you have to do in a hand laying material, and you can get a better resin glass ratio because you're not trying to overwet the mat that break down the binders. What I'm going to do today is talk to you a little bit about some of the materials that we use in the construction of a Key West boat. Uh, this is a chop strand mat. And this is what we use as the skin coat in the first layers in uh, laminating a, a Key West boat. We use a combination of this hand laid and with a chopper gun. It's uh, basically the same material. Uh, this is put on dry and then wet out with a resin and a catalyst. And what comes out the chopper gun is put out, same material, but it's put out with the resin and catalyst all one time. So in combination of uh, the hand lay and the chop gives us the best of both worlds. So this is the mat that's used as a primer between each layers. Uh, this next material is uh, called a 24-ounce uh, roven roven, and it's uh, what used for the, the bulk to, to give us our, our strength in the boat. So this is what we use in some hull bottoms and all hull sides. This is kind of this industry standard here at Key West Boats. We upgrade to the next step, and this is a 36-ounce roven roven. This is what we use in the hull bottom, and we'll use this, and then we'll let this come on up from the sides because the bottom needs more than the sides do. Every layer is put in is overlapped uh, through the center of the boat, so the center is at least twice as thick. Uh, next, in all radiuses and lifting strengths, we'll add this. This is called a biaxial material. And <clears throat> in a corner, we'll have a roven laid over it and then a combination of a biaxial, and that gives us the strength of the glass going both this direction and the zero and the 90, and then we have it in a 45, and a 45 gives us strength in all directions. This is just a little wider version, and we have a uh, little wider areas we need to use it in. Uh, this material is called core mat. Uh, it's got little holes all the way through, and it's made to build a bridge between two layers of glass. Gives us stiffness in hull sides and deck sides, where we have big flat panels that we want some stiffness in. So this is a uh, core mat. It needs to be uh, wet out with resin and wet out very well. Kind of got a sponge to it, so it, uh, it needs to have a lot of resin. The, the next material I'm showing you is two different types of foam. Uh, this is a clay cell material. It's real flexible, got a lot of tracks cut in it. And this material is what we put on floor surfaces and flat areas that we're replacing plywood with. You know, our goal here is there's absolutely no wood, and in our Key West laminate, there's no wood, and no water retention, and no rot later on. So this material, gets uh, bent down into a wet layer chop and a wet layer over top and roving over top gives you a real stiff panel with a lot of bridge to it. Not a lot of screw retention to it or bolt retention. So areas that we know that we're gonna come back, bolt T-tops, bolt cleats, uh, put things that through bolt through, we go to a higher density foam. This foam is much more rigid, much heavier, and we'll use this in areas that need extra reinforcement. Our next step of reinforcement is what we call pro board. It's a plastic block, and this has screw retention. Areas that we know that we're gonna add a screw in, customer might wanna add something later, we'll, we'll put this material so that it'll hold screws, glass over that, sandwich in, just like a big washer inside the laminate. In all the transoms, the Key West boats and areas, we'll glass in aluminum plate. Put it inside the laminate, it's in there, you never see it, it's behind the gel coat, inside hidden in, uh, just so displaces loads over a wider area. Next is our transom material. High density foam, 
material, lightweight, same thing as holes all the way through so it can create a bridge. We'll bed this in wet fiberglass, let that dry, put, wet, put fiberglass over the back side, roll it in, a very strong replacement for plywood. You never have any problem with it rotten or, or gaining weight with satur water saturation. So a uh, real nice alternative to plywood. It's expensive, it's high tech, it uh, makes for a lighter, better boat, something to be with you a long time. Allows us to use a little bit less horsepower. Makes the package more economical for everybody. This is where we will separate the part from the mold. We've done the wax, the gel coat, the skin coat, all the different layups and laminates and cores and reinforcing. And now this is the inner liner, the deck area, and we'll, we, we pull it up from two pivot points and then it releases from that wax and we'll come off of it and then we'll have the finish underneath that you need. So go ahead and lift it off. It'll separate right here from this flange area. All right, well here's it separated. Here's the gel coat we put on first. It, it, the finish is just as nice as what the mold surface is. All the non-skid patterns have transferred off and the non-skid will be on side of there. So the gel coat, the skin coat, the fillets we put in, the layup, all gives us this part. This transferred right off of the mold. So any imperfections that may have been in the mold will, will transfer off on the part. This part's just freshly been pulled out of the mold. All the gloss is there. It's smooth. Any non-skid finishes that were there, the gel coats filled those non-skid finishes. And it uh, has a texture that we want. It gives you a, a good surface to grip your feet on, but it's also uh, uh, smooth enough that it'll clean up and give you good clean surfaces. So uh, this is a part that's uh, ready to go through the, uh, the, the trimming process, and it'll go through the inspection process, and then it'll uh, move over to the assembly shop for assembly. I want to talk to you today about the uh, stringer system that Key West boats put in. Uh, a stringer system is a support, the uh, backbone of the boat. This is what uh, years ago was done in wood and uh, glassed over, and this is what Key West boats does. Here's one of our stringers after it's been broken out the mold. It's a lightweight grid. It's uh, pretty lightweight like this, but as you get it into the mold, the part glassed in, foam filled, it adds for a lot of rigidity. Gives us both flotation and a lot of strength. Well, this is them putting the uh, stringer system in. The, the foam transom's already been glassed in. And what they'll do now is they'll glass that backside that transom in and drop your stringer system grid in. The hoses will be in through already through the middle for the full drain pipes through. This will get glassed in all the way around. It's an engineered, every design, every shape fits the bottom of the hull. Every place we need a drain, every place for a gas tank lid, wires run through for the t-top the all the wires run through for the wiring of the boat the bilge pump wires battery perches everything is tooled in and engineered in this one fiberglass part to fit here's the uh, one of the final steps as we're putting the stringer system in that uh, the the foam system here this this grid system is glassed in all the way around and it's hollow and what he's doing now is he's going to go ahead and inject foam into it go ahead Curtis and we're uh, going to inject foam as a two-part A and B unit. It'll go all the way to the bottom of the stringer and it'll froth and foam fill and fill all the way from the bottom all the way to the top. So we'll inject this stringer system till it's a, a rigid part. It sure does add to the strength of the boat and gives us a lot of flotation. And over these holes when we put the top deck on we'll glass over all those holes with a putty that uh, keeps it watertight. Even though uh, this boat's over 20 foot and not required to have flotation in it, this is added flotation. This is what gives it its strength and a real backbone so it can last for a lifetime. This is a step that Key West boats that I'm particularly proud of. Uh, we uh, use these router fixtures to cut all of our holes in our decks. Uh, we'll screw this down, use this router to follow this template, and it'll cut it out, make a perfect cutout. These holes that are in this fixture line up perfectly with the, the lid or the hatch that we're putting on. So if you need to replace one two, three, four years down the road, you can do it. Here you can see in this cutout we cut out uh, the superior construction that, can, that Key West boats have, all the hard work we put in. Here's the gel coat. You know it's uh, eggshell thickness. It's uh, exactly perfect. has a non-skid pattern already on it, the gloss. The layers of fiberglass we put on 